Hello again, you're welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Wealth. I'm a third year medical student of the University of Ibadan. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 15 highly repeated topics in chemistry. I already made a physics version of this video. If you are taking physics and you've not seen the video, you should check it out. So JAMP is an O-level based examination and you are going to be tested based on O-level materials. Every topic you are going to be tested on, you can find them in the JAMP syllabus. So for chemistry JAMP syllabus, there are 18 topics which you are going to be tested on. Actually, if you count it singly, the topics are more than 18 because they group some topics together and give it one heading. But basically, all those topics in the JAM syllabus is what you're expected to know. Take it from someone who scored 91 in chemistry. If you can sit painstakingly and let this topic one at a time, you understand the topic and can see the relationship between topics. You can assure you are going to do very, very well in the chemistry exam. So put in the work and you are going to see the results. If you feel like you are pressed on time and can't finish all the topics in the jam syllabus or you don't even know where to start from, keep watching this video because I'm going to be talking about 15 topics and how you can easily understand them and also how those topics are related to one another. The first topic is compound and mixture. So basically under this topic, you should know the difference between compound and mixture. You should know the properties of compound and what a mixture is. You should know what impure and pure substances are, physical and chemical changes. And very, very importantly, you should know separating techniques. Separating techniques is very important. There are a lot of repeated questions on it if you check the past question. And also your knowledge from separating techniques can be useful in other part of chemistry like fractional distillation of food oil or in evaporation to dryness when you are talking about salt. The second topic is particularly nature of matter and basic stoichiometry. In this topic you should learn what atom molecules, ion, compounds are and their differences. These are the fundamental of chemistry and you are going to be living it all through. Something about chemistry is that if you learn enough topic in chemistry, to learn others becomes very easy for you because most of these chemistry topics are somehow related to one another and one knowledge will be useful somewhere else. So this is one of the fundamental topics you must know. Also, you should know the first 20 elements and their symbols. If you don't know more than the first 20, it's fine, but it is a must. It is compulsory for you to know the first 20 elements, the symbols and their atomic numbers. Because atomic number of elements can be used to answer so many, just knowing the atomic number of one element can be used to answer so many questions. And you're going to see that later in this video. Now, the second part of this topic is stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is basically one of the calculative part of chemistry. And if you don't understand it, it will seem difficult. But if you understand the basic ideas of stoichiometry, it is fairly easy. It does not have heavy calculations like physics does. All you need to do is to understand the fundamental principle. In stoichiometry, you should know how to get relative atomic mass. You should know how to calculate the relative molecular mass of compounds or molecules. You should know how to calculate the percentage by mass. You should know empirical formula and molecular formula. You should also know how to write chemical formulas using the valency for example calcium chloride is CaCl2 because the valency of calcium is 2 and the, that of chlorine is 1 so they exchange it becomes CaCl2 all those things are the basic things every chemistry student should actually know lastly you should also learn how to balance chemical equations and you'll be needing this knowledge in electrolysis quantitative analysis and there are even questions I've seen a couple of questions on balancing of chemical equations next topic is atomic structure and chemical bonding this one another fundamental topic please learn this topic so in atomic structure you are learning the structure of atom because this is what chemistry is actually about you should learn the structure of atom atom is made up of nucleus and electron the nucleus itself is made up of proton and neutron so you should know things like the proton number is the same thing as the atomic number. In a neutral atom, the number of proton equals to the number of electrons. Changes in neutron number is what causes isotopy. All these things are very, very important to know. Just from a particular year of past question, I think 2016 past question, I saw these three questions just on this single concept of atomic structure. So it is important to learn atomic structure. Also, you should learn how to draw atomic structure, like this kind of drawing, the shells and the rules of drawing them. For example, the first shell can only have two electron filling. Subsequent shells can have eight. Know what valence electrons are. You should also learn 
write the electronic configuration you should know the rules the basic crew so learn the discovery of the atom i've seen quite a number of questions on thompson model of atom so they can also ask questions on other people's model the second part is chemical bonding this is super important to know the types of chemical bonding electrovalent bond covalent bond so you should learn how this bond actually came to be what is happening are they transferring electron are they sharing electrons you should also know what lone pair of electron is what shared pair of electron is next topic is gas law and kinetic theory of matter so in kinetic theory of matter you should know how things are happening at molecular level molecular explanation to boiling evaporation to melting how those things are happening at molecular level you should also learn the kinetic theory gas law in chemistry something i will also plead with you to learn in gas law you should learn all the basic gas laws Charles law, Boyle's law, Dalton's law, partial pressure, Graham's law of diffusion, general gas equation, ideal gas equation, and so on. Also, very importantly, you should learn some specific situations like how to use gas law at standard temperature and pressure, and also how to express things in ratio. Look at this question I saw in the past question. I think you should try to solve this question. Next topic is acid base and salt. In acid base and salt, you should learn the types of acids, strong acid and weak acid, strong base and weak base. You should learn neutralization reaction, how to calculate hydrogen and hydroxyl ion concentration, how to use these values to find the pH of a particular solution, and how to use um, indicators, litmus paper, and other indicators which are forgotten. If it is acid, what color change will you observe in the litmus paper or the other indicator you are using? Salt. Salt is also a very common question. You should know the types of salt and why those types are those types. For example, in acid salt, acid salt is an acid salt because it still has an ionizable hydrogen ion and it exhibits some properties of acid, right? You should know other types of salt. Also, you should know salt hydrolysis. Salt hydrolysis is the reaction of salt with water. And why? In these parts, knowledge you got from weak and strong acid, weak and strong base, it becomes very applicable. So in salt hydrolysis, if a salt is formed from strong acid and weak base, if you put it in water, it, there's going to be a reaction. And what is going to be the outcome of the reaction? You should know that also you should know how to calculate the water of crystallization and you should know properties of salts like deliquescence, efflorescence, hygroscopy and all those stuff. The next important topic is periodic table and periodicity. The periodic table is a single topic on its own that covers a broad range of topics. In periodic table, you should know what group is and what period of the periodic table is and the properties like groups, they have the same number of valence electron period has the same number of electron shell. You should know the different blocks of the periodic table SPDF and the general characteristics of those blocks. You should know the gradation in properties like they call it periodic trend. If you are moving from left to right across the periodic table, what is happening? If you are moving down the periodic table, what is happening? For some groups, you should know their general properties. It is going to help you a lot because later you are going to be studying non-metal and metal as a topic but in periodic table you're having the general characteristics like the first group of periodic table are the alkali metals they have one valence electron they are very reactive metal they are blah 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 nuclear chemistry so nuclear chemistry is basically quite simple and there's not much under it then the next one is quantitative and qualitative analysis so quantitative analysis is like continuation of stoichiometry in qualitative analysis you are going to be learning some properties of element or some reactions if something smells like rotten egg what is it likely to be you could say okay that's likely to be hydrogen sulfide something turns black that's likely to be lead salt i would even advise that maybe days to your exam you could revise this topic called qualitative analysis because it gives you some sort of general overview of metals and non-metals so the next topic is air and air pollution is quite short and relatively simple the next one is water and water pollution so learn the types of water soft and hard water 
advantages of hard water over soft water and solution a true solution and colloidal solution and know the difference between solution and suspension also learn the concept of solubility and how to calculate the solubility of solution the next one is oxidation and reduction this is another important topic that is also repeated you should learn what oxidation and reduction is based on addition of oxygen based on removal of hydrogen of electronegative element of electropositive of, of, of electron also you should learn how to calculate oxidation number and oxidation state of particular elements to learn oxidizing and reducing agents the next topic is electrolysis and your knowledge on oxidation and reduction is very useful in electrolysis learn ionic theory learn what electrode is one electrolyte is different kind of electrolyte and very important to learn the preference of electric discharge using the electrochemical series no, if you put lead and sodium in a particular electrolyte, which of the two is likely to discharge first? Do you know the rules that guide the preferential discharge of anions in a particular solution? You are going to find many questions easy to answer. Thirteen topic is non-metal and it's kind of scam to put non-metal as a single topic because it is actually not a single topic. Generally, you should know the general properties of non-metals and some of the non-metal like carbon, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, chlorine, like the halogens generally. And let me give you some tips on how you can remember this non-metal because actually they are very easy to forget. As you are reading those non-metals, try to see a unique characteristic of each of those non-metals. And also any, any two non-metals that, that have confusing qualities, you should also try to put them together and see what the difference is. Another way is by solving past questions. Keep solving different years of past questions and you'll be coming across questions from different non-metals. Trying to answer those questions is going to help you retain it till your exam. You should learn the physical and chemical properties of those non-metal and the compounds they form. The next topic is metal. In metal, you should learn the general properties of metal and you should also learn different groups of metals. Now, another important part of metal is to learn the source of the metal, like the ore that the metals can be derived from. You can hear things like candlelight, quick lime, slick lime, limestone. What metals can you get from them and what is the chemical formulas for this compound also importantly you should learn alloy in metal lastly organic chemistry organic chemistry also is one topic that is not meant to be a single topic but it is what it is in organic chemistry you learn hydrocarbon you should also learn this prefix what they represent one to ten so you'll be able to name compounds by yourself you should also learn the IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds you should also know general things like what functional group is what alkyl group is what homologous series is. if you are not going to learn all the functional group you should learn functional groups like alkene alkene alkyne alkanol alkanoic acid and alkanoids and you should learn other things like saponification and esterification 